Hey there, I'm Michael and today on Meeplebox you'll be able to see a selection of reviews for Lords of Waterdeep, a Dungeons and Dragons game published by Wizards of the Coast. So what is the game? Well, it's a light strategy game where you are a Lord of Waterdeep and at the beginning of the game you get dealt one of these Lord of Waterdeep cards so that you know exactly which of these conniving, devious individuals you are. What you're trying to do is be the best and greatest Lord of Waterdeep, which of course is represented by victory points marked along the outside of the track here. As you go up in points, you mark them along here. And the Lord you are will give you bonus points at the end of the game. So this is kept secret. So you have your secret identity, you're working from the shadows. No one knows who each person is or exactly what it is they're trying to achieve to get their extra points. The way the game works is on your turn, you will take one of these little meeples here, which is your agent and you will place it on one of the locations in the city of Waterdeep to recruit heroes to your cause who will complete quests furthering your individual agendas. And these quests you will pick up from the inn here and there are all sorts of different quests. The other things you can do at these locations as well as picking up your heroes which could be clerics, rogues, fighters or wizards is to pick up money because everyone needs money but one of the things that money will allow you to do is to buy new buildings which is another location you can go to the builders hall and in the builders hall when you build a building you will add it to the city of Waterdeep and that is then your building that you control and provides another location for these agents or workers to be placed at but whenever someone uses one of your locations you get a benefit too. The game has a fixed length of time. You finish the eighth round and the game is over. During the course of the game, you'll also pick up these intrigue cards and be able to play those, which will affect the game. They might give you extra resources. They're just like little special effects that will change the gameplay up and add a little more variety and randomness into what would otherwise be quite a heavy game game. So that is roughly how you play Lords of Waterdeep and what the game is. Let's now take a look at some reviews of the game. Waterdeep is also known as the City of Splendours. Nestled along the Sword Coast, it's one of the most famous cities in Dungeons & Dragons Faerun setting, also known as Forgotten Realms. It's a centre for adventure, a sprawling metropolis full of wizards, fighters, clerics, and threats from all angles. The game Lords of Waterdeep takes the concepts of City of Splendours and turns it into a worker placement game. A Euro game with an Ameritrash theme. Playing Lords of Waterdeep is really quite simple. You take one of your agents and place them on the space you want, which will get you a reward. For instance, Place them on the Blackstaff Tower and you get yourself one wizard. Place it on the Field of Triumph and you'll reclaim two warriors. Why would you do this? Well, the aim of Worlds of Waterdeep is to gain quests and victory points from quests, such as this here. To complete these quests, you'll need a number of requirements. Clerics, wizards, fighters, thieves. You also may need cash. And the game is a simple case of claiming quests, gathering the resources needed to complete those quests and completing them for victory points. As games go, it's largely pretty simplistic. Complexity does get added in the way of intrigue cards. These are cards which will allow instant effects, a kind of a take that mechanic which may cause your opponents to remove some of their resources. It may force people to bid on quests, or the very worst ones will give other players a mandatory quest, a quest they have to do before they complete their others. The real competition 
in Lords of Waterdeep is on claiming spaces before someone else. If you claim a spot, other players can't go there. It's a one in, one out situation. What is really clever is as the game progresses, you can build extra buildings in Waterdeep. A kind of social development and housing development of the City of Splendours. Each one of these buildings will add an extra worker placement spot. Now this is cool in a couple of ways. Number one, it makes the game change every time. The buildings you draw come from a huge stack of buildings and they can be different every time. Now they're all variations on a theme. Some will get you another place to get rogues from, another place will get you wizards, some will get you a combination of rogues and cash. But because these are different every game, it adds a, adds a section of variety. The other interesting thing about the buildings is whoever builds the building gets to claim it. Claiming the building gets you a secondary reward, which is stated at the bottom of the card. Which also means that owning a building, you actively encourage other people to go there because you get reward for every time another player uses your building. So the game progresses with people grabbing places, grabbing wizards, grabbing thieves, accumulating cash and eventually claiming these quests. It's really quite a simplistic game, which is good. Now it does have a couple of problems. Some people accuse Lords of Waterdeep of having a pasted on theme. This is because it is a very very straightforward worker placement game and you could change the theme for this game quite simply and it probably wouldn't have much of an effect. The other problem is, and this leads to the paste on theme, is when you do claim a wizard, you gain a cube. Orange for fighters, purple for wizards, white for clerics, black for rogues. Which often leads people to say, as they're playing the game, I'll have two white cubes please, or I'll have two purple cubes, rather than saying, I want two clerics, I want two wizards. It kind of breaks the immersion a bit. The other problem is this is a simpl simplistic game, and compared to some of the more advanced worker placement games out there, mm, I wouldn't say it's lacking, but it's towards the simple end of the spectrum. And some players may find they want something with a bit more meat on the bone. However, for me, this is one of my favourite worker placement games. I'm not a big fan of the worker placement genre. I can take or leave some of these more really chewy, brainy games. And Lords of Waterdeep, to me, boils down that worker placement to such a point that that is all I'm looking at. Where am I placing my worker to complete my quest as quickly as possible? And hopefully screw over my opponents in the scheme of things. Also, it's the theme. It is so intrinsically bound with the Forgotten Realms, Dungeons and Dragons theme that you notice things, there's little hidden details here and there. The map of Waterdeep itself is beautifully drawn and has detail in there which you don't need in a worker placement game. You have characters and creatures appear that you'll recognise if you've played any game in the Forgotten Realms, whether it's video games like Baldur's Gate or campaigns in the new D&D 5th edition. And that's what I like about this game. It's not a case of a pasted on theme. It's a theme which has been carefully considered and then applied to a game which is so different to what you'd expect a Dungeons and Dragons game to be. And to me, it's actually one of my favourite, if my favourite, worker placement game. Hello everyone, Mark from Aircon here. And as you can probably see, I am quite a big fan of worker placement games. Um, but what you might also notice is that Lords of Waterdeep is not here. Um, I have played it a few times and I have to say that I'm not a fan unfortunately. Um, I don't really like the theme, Dungeons and Dragons theme I don't really like but it's still fairly pasted on. Um, it feels like it doesn't really have much choice. Um, yes it is worker placement but I feel like it doesn't have the tension of trying to block other people. You just kind of go for what's best for you at the time. It might block someone, it might not, you don't really know. There's not, it doesn't feel like there's much strategy to it and um, yeah. Overall, I just kind of find it a bit boring, unfortunately. So I don't have Lords of Waterdeep. Um, I have only probably played it three or four times, but it's just not grabbed me enough uh, to warrant me picking it up. I have been told that the the expansion, the Skulls of whatever it is, 
Scoundrels of Skullport, that's the one, uh, expansion uh, does kind of add more to it and make it a bit better, but I find that if the base game doesn't really grab me, then I'm unlikely to enjoy the game. So I don't have Lords of Waterdeep, and it's not a recommendation uh, that I can make. What I do have, um, if you are looking for a beginner um, sort of worker placement, a good introduction to worker placement, I would recommend this Waggle Dance. Um, a really great game, a lovely theme, easy to pick up, lots of uh, interesting decisions to make and just really gorgeous and a lot of fun. So if you um, are thinking of picking up a introductory sort of worker placement game, I would recommend Waggle Dance over Lords of Waterdeep. Visually, Lords of Waterdeep is great. I absolutely love the fact that the board here is a map of the city of Waterdeep. The locations you are going to, you can see on this map. I absolutely love that. Now, unfortunately, some of the art on the cards isn't as good as some of the others, and I don't particularly like the art on the actual Lord's cards, but you don't really look at those that much during the game, so not a big issue there. The insert on this is really useful. The quality of these lovely colored cubes that are your heroes is very good, and also, of course, of your agents the cards are a nice quality the everything in it is just a nice quality and visually like with the graphic design layout it's all very intuitive and easy to understand so it works very nice to make it an approachable game this is very much a light game that is a game that many people will be able to play it is that light strategy. Worker placement can become very heavy, very strategic, without really any luck involved. This game balances the luck to that strategy level very nicely to make it an accessible, lighter game that would work very well as a gateway to heavier worker placement games where you're placing your meeples on a location and blocking it off. Now, the reason for this is the randomly drawn out quests mean that you won't necessarily get the exact quests you need for your specific Lord. But there are ways to then mitigate this risk because you can reset the quests that are there to ensure that ones come out that you need. There, you can do quests that will give you extra people, you know, there is a lot going on to mitigate that aspect of luck. Then another aspect of luck is the intrigue cards here. And again, it's mitigated luck because you don't always draw those. You've got to choose to go to a location to draw those. But they can be good for you. They can be not so useful. They're never going to be negative. It just might not be exactly what you needed at the time. And that makes this game light. The choices you have during the game of which quests you go to, which locations you go to first, the order you're doing those can be incredibly important in this. Which buildings you buy uh, can make a big difference. So there is a lot of strategy in here, but without it feeling overwhelming or playing the same every single game, there is a nice amount of replay value. Also, because of the way the game works with buying those buildings, the more people you have, the harder this game becomes. Because the locations and board are fixed and only one building can be bought each round, you, it doesn't matter if you're playing with five people or two people, you're still going to have a lot of places being blocked off. So I will say I prefer actually playing this with probably the two to three mark. When you play with the higher numbers, it is a tighter game. Now that's not necessarily a problem, it's just a preference. It means that it doesn't scale identically for all the different player numbers, but it does do a very good job and does work very well for all the different player numbers. So that's my thoughts on Lords of Waterdeep, a fantastic, fun introduction to the worker placement genre of games. So that's what people think of Lords of Waterdeep. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as our contributors channels. And please do share and subscribe the channel as well. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.